space, mysterious and unreachable. Throughout history, people have turned their gaze to the sky and tried to understand its workings. Technologies evolved as ideas of space flights became more realistic. However, as history shows, where new possibilities arise, new mistakes follow. In turn, these mistakes often led to deaths. Space was no exception. Many attempts at flights and attempts to study it ended tragically. Some cases are known, like the Apollo tragedy, while others are as obscure as dark matter. The history of astronautics began long before the launch of the first satellite in 1957. Ancient philosophers speculated about multiple inhabited worlds, sci-fi writers described space travels, and scientists studied reactive motion. One of the pioneers of rocketry was the Austrian inventor Max Vallier, 1895-1930. Fascinated by astronomy and science fiction, he became a proponent of astronautics, inspired by the works of Hermann Oberth. In 1924, Vallier published the book Flight into Interplanetary Space as a Technical Possibility, promoting engineering achievements. He believed that space expansion would be ensured by airplanes with rocket engines and conducted experiments with powder accelerators on various vehicles. The press enthusiastically covered his work, and Vallier became one of the most well-known specialists in rocketry. On May 17, 1930, Vallier and his assistants tested an engine using oxygen kerosene fuel, but an explosion occurred. Shrapnel wounded Vallier, and he died on the spot. On Monday, May 19th, German and some foreign newspapers reported on the tragedy, calling Vallier the first victim of interplanetary communications. Vallier's death did not halt experiments with rocket engines. Space enthusiasts continued to work despite the risks. Among the casualties was Reinhold Thieling, who developed winged powder rockets for postal services. On October 10, 1933, an explosion occurred in his workshop, resulting in the deaths of Tiling, his assistant, Angela Budimer, and mechanic, Friedrich Kerr. German scientists and inventors advanced rocketry, and during the war, Germany presented ballistic missiles A-4 V-2. After the war, allies studied trophy samples of equipment and realized that the A-4 could be used for atmospheric sounding and for creating more advanced rockets capable of launching satellites and manned spacecraft into orbit. Among the new enthusiasts of space exploration, American sci-fi writer Robert Heinlein stood out, who closely followed the experience of German rocket scientists in the USA. In March 1946, he wrote his first juvenile novel, rocket ship Galileo, mentioning a secret Nazi base on the moon. Unexpectedly, Heinlein spawned the myth that the Nazis allegedly launched an intercontinental ballistic missile A9-A10 with pilot Rudolf Schroeder aboard on January 24, 1945, to strike New York. Believing that the rocket caught fire, Schroeder took cyanide. The rocket reached space, deviated from its course, and fell into the Atlantic. Supporters of the myth Consider Schroeder the first astronaut, but no evidence of his mission or the existence of A99A10 has been found. Myth probably inspired by the flight of the German rocket plane Adder, Ba 349 Natter, created to combat bombers. On March 1, 1945, Lothar Sieber took off in it, but the cabin broke apart and he died. It was the first vertical flight of a rocket device with a person but it had nothing to do with cosmonautics and could not rise higher than six kilometers. Robert Heinlein supported the myth of Soviet suicide pilots allegedly killed in space before Yuri Gagarin. On May 15, 1960, from the Tyuradam test site, now Baikonur Cosmodrome, a prototype of the 1KP manned spacecraft Vostok, called the first space satellite ship, was launched. It was not equipped with life support systems and thermal protection, so it was doomed. The designers wanted to test orientation and braking systems in real conditions, but the 1KP rose to a higher orbit and stayed there. Soviet officials acknowledged the emergency situation, but Western press articles appeared about supposedly pilot Gennady Zavadovsky on board. Zavadovsky did exist, but at that time, he worked as an aviation systems tester and was not a cosmonaut. Western journalists repeatedly reported on the deaths of pilots on Soviet spacecraft, but these rumors were not confirmed. However, it is now known that there was indeed an astronaut who died before Yuri Gagarin's flight. His name was Valentin Bondarenko. He underwent testing in a low-pressure oxygen atmosphere chamber. 
On March 23, 1961, after the experiment, he removed medical sensors, wiped his skin with a cotton swab soaked in alcohol, and threw it into a trash bin. The swab fell onto a hot plate, causing a fire. Bondarenko suffered severe burns and died a few hours later. His name was kept secret for a quarter of a century, contributing to the emergence of dark legends. Victims of space appeared when tests of the Soyuz spacecraft began, replacing the Vostoks and Vosko. Despite problems with unmanned uh, launches, the leadership decided to take a risk and send two Soyuz with cosmonauts to mark their Soviet holiday. On April 23, 1967, Soyuz 1 with Vladimir Komarov aboard was launched. The next day, the launch of Soyuz 2 with three cosmonauts and the docking of the ships were planned. However, problems began in orbit. The solar panel did not open, the orientation system did not work, and the batteries ran out. The launch of the second ship was canceled and Soyuz 1 was decided to be landed early. During descent, the main parachute did not open and the backup landed in the aerodynamic shadow. The spacecraft crashed into the ground and caught fire. The modernization of the spacecraft took a long time, but the crew's safety remained unresolved. On June 29, 1971, cosmonauts Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev entered the Soyuz 11 spacecraft after working on the Salyut station. Before undocking, a malfunction occurred. The spacecraft's hatch did not close. The cosmonauts began to panic. Soon the problem was resolved, and the descent vehicle entered the atmosphere. It made a soft landing in the calculated area, but the crew did not respond to the search and rescue team's calls. However, upon opening the hatch, it turned out that all the cosmonauts were dead. The cause of the tragedy was related to a ventilation valve that suddenly opened at an altitude of 150 kilometers. Within two minutes, the pressure in the descent module dropped almost to zero. The cosmonauts had no time to react and died from suffocation. It's astonishing, but currently the Soyuz is considered one of the safest manned spacecraft in history. Three, two, one. Engine turbo pump at flight stage. Engine at maximum thrust. Lift off. And there is lift off of the Soyuz MS-10. And its automatic evacuation system saved crews in emergency situations three times in 1975, 1983, and in 2018. The U.S. aimed to outpace the Soviet Union in space through the Saturn Apollo program, but haste led to no good. The Saturn Apollo program was costly and cumbersome, but they wanted to implement it within 10 years. Inevitable haste in testing with real spacecraft involving astronauts led to one of the darkest tragedies in the history of space exploration. On January 27, 1967, astronauts Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee were inside the Apollo 1 spacecraft cabin at the launch complex at Cape Canaveral, where they were conducting a launch simulation and the first three hours of orbital flight. The accident occurred when oxygen suddenly ignited, heating the cabin and generating smoke. Rescuers took time to open the hatch due to the heat. Two members of the launch team were poisoned by carbon monoxide. After five minutes, the spacecraft was opened, but the astronauts were found dead. The exact cause of the fire has not been determined to this day, but it was likely caused by a short circuit in the wiring. After this tragedy, significant changes were made to the safety of spacecraft and spacesuits. By the way, I have a separate video on this story on, on my channel. Small malfunctions and accidents occurred later, but engineers learned to deal with them. The Apollo 13 flight did not promise serious problems. It was the fifth manned expedition to the moon and the third attempt to land on its surface. The spacecraft launched on April 11, 1970, 
and was supposed to land north of the Fra Mauro crater. On board were astronauts James Lovell, Fred Hayes, and John Swigard. On the night of April 3rd to 14th, during the flight to the moon, an incident occurred. During the standard fuel defueling procedure, mixing the contents of the tanks with fuel components, there was a muffled thud, and the spacecraft jerked heavily. Swigert, who remained in contact with mission control, uttered a phrase that became famous. Uh, yeah, we've had a problem here. Can say again, please. Uh, here's we've had a problem. It was later discovered that an explosion inside the oxygen tank caused an explosion in the service module. The situation seemed hopeless. From the spacecraft's windows, the astronauts saw metallic debris swirling around, enveloping them in a haze. It became evident that the moon landing was canceled and the resources of the lunar module needed to be used to return to Earth. Mission Control developed a trajectory using the moon's gravity, acting on the principle of the slingshot effect. This is such a turn and movement toward the planet due to the moon's attraction. The astronauts had to adjust it four times, relying on visual cues. Lovell and Heiss successfully managed the process, and the command module was able to enter Earth's atmosphere. On April 17th, the astronauts returned to Earth, surviving in an emergency state for 87 hours. Later, Lovell explored scenarios that could have unfolded under different circumstances, finding that if the explosion had occurred a day earlier, the astronauts would have had no chance of survival. The consequences of the accident were felt throughout the lunar exploration program. The Apollo 14 mission was delayed by five months, and three planned missions were canceled altogether, cutting the plans down to the Apollo 17 mission. There was a need to ensure safety for flights to the Skylab orbital station, since at that time only the Soviet Union had alternative means of transporting people into orbit, the idea arose to organize a joint experimental flight of Apollo-Soyuz test project ASTP spacecraft. It took place in July 1975. The ASTP flight was the final one in the Apollo program. Instead of small spacecraft, reusable winged giants appeared. The space shuttles, intended for commercial transportation, satellite deployment, orbital repairs, and space experiments. There were even plans to use them for tourist flights. However, for cost-saving purposes, several compromises were made, including the abandonment of detachable cabins intended for astronaut evacuation in case of emergency. Instead, the shuttles separated entirely from the external fuel tank and glided like airplanes to airstrips in Europe or Africa. Additionally, materials and thermal protection coatings for the shuttles were chosen with cost-saving in mind and did not always provide the necessary protection. These compromises had fatal consequences for the shuttle's safety. In April 1981, the operation of the winged spacecraft began, and initially, everything went smoothly. However, the program was financially unprofitable and required significant investments. To maintain public interest, in August 1984, President Ronald Reagan announced the possibility of space travel for ordinary U.S. citizens and the first flight of a teacher. Krista McAuliffe, a 37-year-old English and history teacher from the provincial town of Concord. Following this, a journalist's flight was planned. Later, a representative from the business community. Along with six other crew members, McAuliffe was supposed to go into space on the Challenger spacecraft. Her flight on the Challenger shuttle was to be the 25th in the history of the program. However, on January 28, 1986, just 59 seconds into the flight, flames began to emanate from the right booster which penetrated the fuel tank and led to its explosion at an altitude of 14 kilometers. The shuttle cabin soared into the air, but soon fell into the ocean. The cause of the tragedy was actually discovered immediately. Engineers working on reusable solid rocket boosters had warned of possible problems. A cold front passed through Florida before launch, and the boosters found themselves in conditions that did not meet the requirements. Despite the warnings, the management decided to proceed with the launch but this decision proved fatal. The booster sections were deformed due to the low temperatures. This mistake led to the deaths of seven crew members, including teacher Krista McAuliffe. The Challenger disaster had serious consequences for space exploration. 
the dream of a ship for all collapsed and it became clear that passenger flights for amateur astronauts would not be realized in the near future. Over the next two and a half years, upgrades to the boosters and systems were carried out with a focus on additional quality control and safety. The Challenger was replaced by the new Endeavour shuttle, but by this time, reusable winged spacecraft had ceased to be the main direction of American space exploration. On January 16, 2003, seven astronauts boarded the oldest shuttle, the Columbia, for a mission. Commander Rick Husbin, Pilot William McCool, Mission Specialists David Brown, Kalpana Chawla, Michael Anderson and Laurel Clark, and Payload Specialist Elon Rahman. Rahman was also the first Israeli astronaut, so the Columbia mission sparked immense interest among his fellow citizens. During the flight, at the 81st second, a piece of foam insulation broke off from the fuel tank and struck the left wing of the spacecraft. Ground control services noticed this, but deemed it non-threatening. Similar incidents had occurred before, with shuttles returning safely to Earth. Specialists believed that the foam piece couldn't seriously damage the heat shield, so they didn't consider the incident an emergency. On February 1st, Mission Control in Houston authorized the Columbia to begin its descent from orbit. Nine minutes after entering the atmosphere, at an altitude of about 61 kilometers, the left wing of the spacecraft burned and disintegrated. The control system couldn't handle the increased aerodynamic resistance, causing the shuttle to rotate and break apart. An inverted trail appeared in the sky over Texas, branching out, and flashes were observed. All crew members perished along with the spacecraft. Investigation revealed that the impacts from foam insulation pieces were not as harmless as previously thought. And though no shuttle had suffered until 2003, returning to Earth, it could be considered exceptional luck. After this incident, the system was upgraded at a cost of a billion dollars, but in July 2005, the incident recurred. The Discovery was sent into orbit, and during launch, a piece of foam insulation detached from the tank again. Even the staunchest supporters of the shuttle program admitted that it needed to be discontinued. The names of the brave Earthlings who perished in the quest to conquer space are forever enshrined in the names of geographical and astronomical objects. Their tragic fate reminds us that extraterrestrial expansion is just beginning, and studying mistakes will help us move toward the stars faster and safer.